Symmetries are perhaps one of the most powerful concepts in all of physics. We use symmetries everywhere to unlock deep and important unifications in all sorts of physical situations. And we've been doing it for hundreds of years. Symmetries in a very, very broad sense is that when it happen when you try to change something, but you end up with the same result. For example, uh, symmetric faces. Like if you see a face and you're like, wow, that's a pretty symmetric face. What's going on is if you draw a line down the middle and you see one arrangement of like eyebrows and eyes and nostril and lip, and then you go the other side and you see the same arrangement, you've changed your viewpoint, but you get the same result. You have a symmetry. Symmetries go back all the way to the time of Newton, who figured out that the gravity here on the Earth is the exact same gravity happening up in space. There's a symmetry there. You change something where you are in the universe, but the gravity stays the same. The, the laws describing gravity stay the same. There's a symmetry there. There's a unification there. Symmetries give us our laws of conservation in physics. The fact that you can run an experiment today on, say, fundamental particle physics or whatever, and then do the exact same experiment tomorrow and get the exact same answer and do the exact same experiment a year from now and get the exact same answer, there is a symmetry in time. You change when you do the experiment, but you get the same result. This leads through various cool mathematics to conservation of energy. The conservation of energy owes its existence to this symmetry in time. Same if you take an experiment, do an experiment, you get a result and then you pick it up and you go somewhere else. You run the exact same experiment and if you get the exact same result, you have a symmetry in position. This gives you conservation of momentum. And then changing the direction of the experiment, its angle on the table, you, if you get the exact same result, you have a conservation of angle and so, or sorry, a symmetry and angle and so you get a conservation of angular momentum. We've pretty much run out of ways to move through the universe. And so that's it in terms of symmetries and that's it in terms of conservation and ways to unify physics. But there's one more. But this one more only happens in the quantum world. This one more only has to do with something called quantum spin. It's a fundamental property of all particles and when we discovered quantum spin like a hundred or so years ago at first we thought it was just like a microscopic of regular spin like if you have a metal ball and it's electrically charged and it's heavy and it's spinning it has spin it responds to magnetic fields in a certain way. And then initially we just thought, oh, if you just shrink this down to be the size of an electron, then it's basically the same thing, but it's not. But the name's stuck. What it means is that electrons and protons respond to magnetic fields in a certain way that looks a lot like a very tiny electrically charged metal ball that's spinning around. But an electron only has one amount of spin, one magnitude of spin. It only spins a certain speed. And electrons also have no spatial extent, so it's kind of hard to think of them actually spinning around. But particles respond to magnetic fields. We call this thing spin, and it's quantum mechanics, so they only get certain values. And some kinds of particles get some kinds of spins, like half or three halves, the naming convention here is a little bit weird. Things like electrons, they have spin half. It's just the definition. We're just going to go with it. Things like uh, photons or the W boson or the gluons, they have what's called integer spin. Spin zero, spin one, spin two. These are two different families of particles. They have two different kinds of spins. And it turns out buried in the mathematics that there might be a symmetry there. 
that there might be a symmetry between these two kinds of particles. This is not a symmetry that appears in our macroscopic world. This is only a symmetry that appears in the subatomic world. But where there's a symmetry, there's a possibility that there's a unification there, that there's a link there, that there's something more powerful going on. The concept of symmetry that potentially links quantum spins together is called supersymmetry because it's like symmetry, but even better. And this supersymmetry was discovered in the 1970s first in the context of string theory, but actually ended up getting ported over into our standard model of particle physics or an attempt to expand the standard model of particle physics. And so now it's, it's an idea that's born from string theory, but appears everywhere. So you see supersymmetry everywhere. And that's what I'll talk about next week is how it actually works. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to go to patreon.com slash PM to keep these videos going. I am in the middle of a multi, multi, multi-part series on the nature and history of string theory. And right now we are turning strings into super strings. See you next week.